today on Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Playing Heat Man stage without item number two. You get like a high when you get you there, do. And, you, <laughs> and you see all the blankets and the shit. You're yeah. like, you start getting like dopamine. Yeah, you get adrenaline. <laughs> Instant death. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Nope>. Yeah. <laughs> And we're grown ass men. Yeah, we're grown men. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, let's see you wear your referee uniform outside of the bar where you try to pick up 50 year old man, asshole. <laughs> I want Carrie Champion to laugh at my white dick. <laughs> say hashtag fuck censorship you're listening to treasure hunting for nostalgia Hello, and welcome to episode 71 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. So what we're bringing to you is an action-packed episode, minus the action. <laughs> We've got quote time from Nick. We've got some Game of the Week action going on. Some awesome treasure hunting. Uh, we've also got the top five Funny video game deaths. Funny ways to die in video games. That's pretty unique. It was pretty hard to come up with. I think we may have some jerk of the week action. Oh, man. Double action. <laughs> Maybe even triple action. <laughs> and I got another NES box art trivia to give you guys. But it's SNES. I didn't explain this last week, but what I do is... I go up to the stupidest person at work, uh, who's hecka old, and I... Is it the same person every week? Every week. Okay. And I <laughs> uh, take I take Photoshop, or not even Photoshop, just the, some cutting tool, and I cut out the name of the game and have her describe N NES box art, and have these guys try to guess what she uh, set, said about the game, so she'll describe it, and they'll have to guess the title. And then there's Werewolf. I don't know what that is, but that's what Brad has written down. <laughs> I love werewolves as long as they're bipedal and, and not just giant giant wolves running around. <laughs> like in Twilight. Oh, that's so stupid. <laughs> quote fuck, time? Fuck you, Twilight. That's not my quote. <laughs> All right. My quote, it's my turn to do quote time. So here we go. What the hell? Who's the dead man that hit me with the salt shaker? Yeah. <laughs> That's sea bass. Yes, it is. <laughs> From Dumb and Dumber. Hell yeah. By the time this episode comes out, I think the new Dumb and Dumber will come out. Oh, will it? It's that soon? The 14th, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I figured I'd do something relevant to a, a, a movie that's coming out that I'm excited about. Uh, been hoping for a Dumb and Dumber sequel. Not that Dumb and Dumber -er movie the a real sequel with Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. Yeah. That that sh that movie had its moments. The the wasn't the same. The no, the best moment was Bob Saget. <laughs> no, for me it was when uh Harry's sitting on the couch and he's talking to his pretend friend Captain Rob. He's <laughs> like, that's right, Captain Rob, he is a rat fink talking about Lloyd. <laughs> I don't know why that was just so funny to me. <laughs> All right, so that's my quote time. Uh, just a little shout out to Dumb and Dumber. Everyone go out and see it because I'm sure we'll do a movie review on that in the coming episodes. My YouTube pick of the week is episode 61, Understone Tombstone. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Brad's been putting the, the, the episodes up on YouTube, and I love how he put a, a picture of alcoholic beverages on the, on the YouTube picture. I thought that was really funny. Uh, it's just... It's a really funny episode for, for all of us, really, because none of us drink very often, if ever, really. And this this episode 
is just us plastered drunk and it's probably not going to happen again anytime soon if ever so it's kind of a cool thing to have documented as drunk <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's hilarious too uh yeah that we had tim's essay which nick sounded very offended rightfully so and that was just hilarious and uh <laughs> The top five finisher moves, that's where the understone tombstone <laughs> came from. Because Nick swore that he said the Undertaker's tombstone. <laughs> he was like, understone? <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny, guys. Go check it out. And Brandon kept on saying, no, that's not right. Like anything that Brad <laughs> said, Brandon would be contentious like about if it. when he was doing uh like sexual acts <laughs> stop doing that stop <laughs> fucking the air very funny episode go check that out i also want to give a shout out to uh the ninja guidance that brandon or brad had put up i started watching those last night and uh those are very amusing as well so check those out as, as well if you get the chance game of the week yep what do you got? I've got the evil within. Oh, yeah. Is that scary? It's <coughs> not as scary as the first chapter. The first chapter? The first chapter. Like, there's chapters throughout the oh, game. Oh, okay, okay. So, you're saying the first one's the best? That's Well, it's the scariest. That's probably where they put all their scares in to real people in. And then, like, throughout the game, it has its moments. But I just got done. Well, I didn't even get done. I'm fighting this boss. I'm on a bus. And it basically blocks my path i can't get anywhere and all of a sudden he stopped moving and then so i could still shoot him in the head and stuff i used all my ammo and everything and it, it's like i broke the game he was just frozen there taking bullets and arrows to the face <laughs> and he didn't i just couldn't pass it so i just reset it i'll try it again later what about uh silent hill how's it compared to silent hill as far as scare wise uh, it's, it's right along with Silent Hill. I'd say it's up there with it. So, uh, there's this, you know, the scene in Silent Hill 2 where Pyramid Head, you don't see him yet, but he's dragging the sword and it's making that screeching yeah. noise. I heard that in this game and I was like, what is that? That's, so it's, it's cool. It's pretty I, tight. I, it's fun. I'm going to replay it a few times, uh, again on the hardest difficulty and then I'll probably play through it again because... There's just so much to do. It's so fun. That's cool. Do you have anything, Nick? I'm game of the week less. I also don't have a game. I did play through Mega Man 2, which um, I played through on Twitch live. I'll go into that later. And I died once by a simple misstep into a lava pit at the beginning of the level. I didn't jump. Uh, but other than that, I beat the game without dying. So I'll get there one of these days. Was that on Heatman stage? Yes. Have you seen Dumb Ways to Die in video games? There's a song that's Dumb Ways to Die. Oh, I said no. I shook my head no. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them is playing Heat Man stage without item number two. Yeah, you definitely need item number two on that game. I thought it was pretty funny. Treasure hunting. Yeah. How many items do you have? Let me see. I have, a num I have them all written down. Eleven. I have four. So I guess I'll do mine first since I have the price charting app up. Okay. Now, these are. I was a little bit more creative with Dimple. <laughs> I bet you thought this was an ordinary blanket. I sure <laughs> did. <laughs> but it was hiding my treasure. Hmm. Now, this first item has an item that I found at the Goodwill as well. So you're going to have to let me know how much it's worth. Oh, Mario Party 4. What I did was I brought a ballpoint pen along with me <laughs> and wrote Mario Party on it. Because you see what system it's for. In 64, action adventure. <laughs> How much, uh, what did they want for Mario Party 4? Uh, $23.99. Okay, and what'd you get it for? $5.99. Wow. It's worth $22, $25, actually. Awesome. Oh, bro. Oh, yeah. No instruction booklet with that one. 
Brawly the Enraged Saiyan. You could probably get this for like three bucks. Oh, really? Is that all? Yeah, this isn't the rare one. The rare Brawly sets are the GT ones oh, from Baby okay. Saga. So these ones, not, not so much. Oh, Mario Party 6. You did the same thing? Yes. For some reason, they didn't have them in the plastic cases. So I got lucky. And I just put up one of these, huh? Was it six you put up? Yeah. Oh, I guess so, huh? Instructions. Yep. Cool. That one's 30. Yeah. And this is my final item. Mario Party 7. Wh which temple did you get this at? Citrus Heights. That's awesome. 25. And I did not pay 12.97 for that. It rang up 5.99 as well. Awesome. So, what's the total here? For what? For all of these. Work. Uh, that one's 26, 30, and 25. 81? Okay. Plus 3 for the Brawly. Uh, I'm just, I'm being generous with that Brawly. It's not worth much. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I hit a gold mine with that Brawly. Nah. Brandon's treasure's worth like $82. <laughs> I take that back. It's only worth a dollar. <laughs> So, what are your items? I think I got you beat. Ah. So, I went to Dimple Arden yesterday. Uh, I took Nausea there. Oh, you know what? I'm so glad you got over at Dimple today or whenever you went. Did you see that fucking Mario I put up on the page? No. Super Mario Brothers, fourteen ninety nine. Oh, that's retarded. Oh, I, I was mean... so disgusted. When... No, that is fucking retarded. <laughs> Um, I was so disgusted when I saw that. <laughs> That's uh, sickening. Yeah. So, so before I get into my treasure hunting, Naja brought home a bad paycheck for school. But I told you they get $100 a week, and if they do good stuff, they get more money. If they do bad stuff, they get less money. And it's not real money. It's just like how you do in life. So she brought home a $30 paycheck. Oh, man. Because partially it's... Garnished. <laughs> partially it's our fault because $30 of that was because we didn't sign a paper. Yeah. It's a, but still, that's like 60 bucks. So she had Saturday school this morning. At first, I was like, I don't I don't think she should have to go. <laughs> at like 6 o'clock in the morning, that's when they have to get there. Damn, oh, man. And I woke up and she was, I woke up at five and she was already in the living room. She's affected by daylight savings like me. I said, get ready. You're going to Saturday school. And she said, no, <laughs> there's going to be heck of bad kids there. So she's like, there's so many bad kids. I don't want to go. <laughs> so many bad kids. And when we, so I, we drove up there and the whole reason why I told Jamila I'd take her to Saturday school so I could go to Denios. Be, be the first I one to it. Denios. I knew it. So I drive her up to the school. It's 5.50. There's no one there except for a few cars. It's completely dark. And we're waiting for them to open the gates. And around 5.56, she says, no one's going to come. I was like, all right, let's go home. And all of a sudden, you see the dean pull up and start unlocking the gate. And like these <laughs> lurking kids slither out of the car with all their hoods and baggy pants yeah. on. <laughs> bad kids. Yeah, it's the tough baddie kids. <laughs> and so I pull into the gate and wait to see which room the teacher goes in. And she's sitting in the back seat and she says, I'm scared. I like, I'm scared. Like, now you, you know you won't be able to talk in class anymore unless you want to get punished. <laughs> Punishment. <laughs> so she got out and and walked in the classroom, and I was on my way to Dimple. Or, I'm sorry, on my way to the Denios. So before I go into my Tell and Denios, I've got my Dimple treasure, which I got last night. So here's my first item. Oh, Echo for Sega CD? Yep. I've never seen a Sega CD game there. Neither have I. That's why I had to get it. Oh, man. Oh, that's hecka tight. How much you get that for? Uh, I mean, how much is it worth? Only 12. Oh. And this is my second item from Dimple. Oh, man. The Anthology, or the Chronicle. Yeah, that right, Nick? 
Uh, Show him the cover. Can I see? Yeah, I do have that one. How much is that worth? Like 15 Yep. So, Denios. Walking around Denios. Didn't see anything on my first go-around. It's still early, so I go uh, towards the barn, like where they have the magic cards and stuff. Uh, walk back, and this is my first encounter. Oh, the Simpsons hit and run. That's cool. Yeah, the guy had a sign, two for $2 each, or three for five. I'm like, this is a friggin' bargain. So I pull out, pull this one out. It's for the PlayStation 2. And I say, $2? They're like, no, games are $5. I said, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> oh, really? Will you take $4 for it? Because it's worth 10 So I want to get a better deal. He said, no, no, two for eight or five dollars each. So I hand it back. I said, all right, I'll, I'll pass. I walk away. He's like, okay, okay, four dollars. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I'm like, cool, four dollars. I hand him a 20. <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't say all I have is four dollars, Mark Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Which who you saw at Denial's. Yeah, yeah. I see him later. So then I mosey over to the little overhead, um, like the houses, like they kind of look like houses that where the anime shop is. Yeah. Burger King toys still in the package. Yep, Dragon Ball Z. I figured you'd get put that in with the lot, the card lot, because they come with the promo card still. Who who's the purple one, Krillin? Uh, no, it's Frieza Gohan. and Gohan. Yeah. Gohan. That's cool. Yeah. So those, those were only a dollar each. You could probably, I don't know how much you could get for them, but. So then it's getting around 7.30, 8 o'clock, and I want to he start heading over to the junk vendors again. The people just put their blankets on the ground and throw all their shit down, and you have to rifle through it to find some good stuff. That's the best part. It is. That's, that is the best part. That's where you find people. You get like a high when you get you there. You do. And you, <laughs> and you see all the blankets and the shit. You're yeah. Like, you start getting like dopamine. Yeah, really? you get adrenaline. <laughs> You do get adrenaline, don't you? And you're like shaking, and you're like, oh, fuck yeah, you're, you're, look at all this shit. Your legs get pumped up, and you start moving hecka fast. <laughs> Didn't you get that when we went, Nick? Yeah. Tight. <laughs> when Nick says yeah like that, I've learned that's a lie. <laughs> so uh, this other guy, uh, I find he's pulling out his stuff, and he's got three games for $3. He said, all these games are $3, except for this Hannah Montana one. <laughs> That's 10 because it comes with two microphones. <laughs> Whatever. I said, oh, shucks. <laughs> so this is the first one I got. Sega Genesis game. And he, he was firm. He went by $3 per game. Predator 2? Yeah. How much is that worth? Seven. I'm going to have to play this. Uh... Can you play it on your Retcon 3 and do a video blind video playthrough? If it's a good game. Yeah, if it's not just like end it and like put up what you played. I think it's cool. And then this was the second game. I never even seen Predator 2. This is worth 10. <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> Remember I found that complete at Dimple? Yeah. And then this was I think the the best one that he had. How much is it worth? Fifteen. Oh, Parappa two for PlayStation two. That's tight. Yep. And then after this, I started heading down the aisle, and I see someone hunched over looking through comic books, and I said, "That kind of looks like Mark, but he doesn't have his beard because he used to have a beard when I knew him." And so he gets up, and he's like. How much for this book? It was the first appearance of Lobo. Uh, paid 50 cents for it. So I said, hey, Mark. He's like, oh, hey, what's up, Brandon? Like, we see each other all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we start talking and, you know, this is what I got. This is what I got. He's like, He was excited about the Parappa the Rapper. And he said, so do you keep any of these games? I said, no, I sell them all. He's like, oh, really? On eBay? I said, yeah, on eBay. He's like, oh. Okay, so I walk back up to the north end by the fence on the street. Yeah. So there's a huge uh, line of vendors there. 
that weren't there that when I first got there. So this is my second. Uh, is this my last one? Yeah, this is my last haul. It looks like. Okay. These games, she wanted five dollars each, or I could do all of them for ten. <laughs> oh fuck that game Sonic the Hedgehog 2 there's so many copies of that out not there. for resale it runs between 2 and 4 yeah here's a second game I got this one Lion for 10. King I knew it you know how I could tell no oh. the virgin uh here's the third game Aladdin <laughs> good soundtrack yeah Here's the fourth game. Frogger. Frogger. Yeah. <laughs> and these are all Sega Genesis, by the way. And then here's the final game. X-Men. Complete. That's tight. So, out of all my denials and uh, Dimple Trip, I spent $28. And it is worth 90-something dollars. Tight. It's a close one. It was. Let's get this punishment out of the way. Okay. Seven. Oh, bamboo shoots. <laughs> no. Oh, no, that's 17. Oh. Buttercup. <laughs> 12. Roll again twice. Yes. You added that one? Yeah. 11. Shockmaster. Two. Five. I'll take a negative five to my treasure bank. All right. Your turn? Yep. 11, Shockmaster, 1, ooh, $10 to my treasure bank. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, man. <laughs> it's going to be a rough one for me to crawl out of. I'm sure you'll find a way. So check out uh, our Facebook page. Go ahead and uh, like us and be our fan. Uh, go ahead and follow us on Instagram and subscribe to us on YouTube. We're getting a lot of uh, game playthroughs up on there. So far, we have a boy and his blob, Mega Man 2, Ninja Gaiden, Kid Icarus. Uh, go ahead and watch those videos. They're pretty funny. And also, we're going to start live streaming, maybe, uh, on Twitch. We're treasure hunting number four nostalgia. So, treasure hunting for nostalgia. But it's the number instead of F-O-R. It was what too is, long. Oh, it was too long. Uh, so, I might post out something when we do live stream on Facebook, like, hey, we're going to Twitch. So, just go ahead and subscribe to us there. Uh, I did a mock playthrough on Mega Man 2, and I had a couple watchers, so that's pretty cool as well. And you didn't even advertise, huh? They just random No, people. because when you see my kids, I'm, I'm always like, screw this. Screw this uh, technology stuff. I'm just going old school. But then they're like, Dad, if you start playing a game, it'll alert people who's browsing that you're playing a game. And... There's not a lot of retro games up there, so people might actually watch you. And I was like, oh, okay. So they talked me into it. Uh, and I'm actually going to include them on my next game show. Uh, and that's going to be fun as well. Um, so top five this week. Top five video game deaths. Ways for your hero to die in a funny manner. This was really hard. After I finished my list, I tried to go back and research. And people just had like top five enemy deaths and stuff but this is should be a fun one to do so we'll start with nick then brandon then brad and <laughs> here comes our top five so my number five is not is not an action of dying it's just the result of dying it's from final fantasy 4 there's a character by the name of fusoya <laughs> whenever he is whenever he dies or i guess in, in the game they say that he is swoon he just looks like a freaking like a pale bowling ball like on a blanket of white feathers basically every time i saw that you know when i was a kid playing that it just cracked me up so much because he just he just collapses and it's just there's just white hair everywhere and it's just oh it always made me laugh so that's my number five is fusoya's crumpled carcass whenever he dies and he's a lunarian right he's, he's like is. a pure blood uh-huh I wonder if when Lunar Lunarians uh, die, they lose their bones. That's what it seems like. <laughs> All his bones get taken out. What about, what about uh, Zemus? Is he Lunarian? Like, what is he? He's someone who likes to sleep through the whole fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So he's like, maybe he's like a sloth of the Lunarians. Like, he, like, <laughs> like you know how we have our sloths here? Maybe that's... They only move like one day a month. Yeah. yeah. 
And, you know, sometimes they'll grab their arm thinking it's a tree limb and drop to their death. Yeah. <laughs> I've read that somewhere. Yeah. Uh, number five on my list. We all know Kirby likes to eat. So naturally, when Smash Brothers came out, Kirby's grab move would be him swallowing people. I always found it hilarious to swallow your opponent. <laughs> and if they only have like one life left and you've got two or three, you just walk off the ledge with them in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and they just plummet to their death. That's pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. But why is it so low on my list? Because no one plays with that little f***. <laughs> I like Kirby. <laughs> Kirby games are fun. <laughs> I just don't like how he's like chewed down versions of whoever he eats. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number five on my list is going to come from Maniac Mansion. Not a whole lot of ways you could die in that game. But the funniest is when you present Weird Ed with his blowed up hamster. <laughs> He says, what have you done? And he just kills you. It just shows your tombstone on the property. <laughs> That's hilarious. So all because you throw his hamster in a microwave and kill it. And present it to him. <laughs> I, I forgot about that game. That, there's probably a lot of good funny deaths on that game. Yeah, like um, when you have to empty the swimming pool and you put your person down and there. Drown him in there. <laughs> Because they can't swim. I guess not. And then you get shocked from fixing the telephone if you don't turn the electricity off. <laughs> so, yeah, number five. I don't know how Weird Ed kills you. I don't know if it's with his bare hands or if he, like, has a commando spy kit that has a knife in it or shanks you. But that's just hilarious how Weird Ed just becomes a murderer for his hamster dying. I don't remember the, the story of the game all that well, but do they explain why, like, the Ed characters and like the, there's the there's a doctor as well, right? Doctor Fred is his dad, yeah. right? Why are they green? I think they're supposed <laughs> to be like monsters or something, like ghouls, like the Adams family kind of. But they don't actually come out and say that, right? No, yeah. I th I think it's just they wanted to make him ghoulish, symbolic. yeah. Because there's giant tentacles running around too, so <laughs> that makes sense. I'm just saying, if you saw green humans walking around, they might stick out a little bit. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, tentacles with razor. <laughs> yeah, it's tentacle party. No oh, man, ain't no party like a tentacle party. <laughs> There's two of them too: a, a yeah. red one and a green one, or the purple. Purple. Yeah, the purple likes to go through the back door. <laughs> oh man, poor razor. <laughs> Trying to play a sound. Give me one moment. You recognize that sound? I do. Do you know what it is? No. It's Link beating up a cucko. Oh! <laughs> That's my number four on, on, on my list. Funny ways to die. Death by cucko from Link to the Past. So if, if you go around beating up cuckos enough, or basically chickens in the game, they will swarm you. They will come and kill you. If you're going to beat up a cucko, make sure you're near an exit because you want to get out of there quick. Otherwise, they will annihilate you. They will. <laughs> That's my number four is death by chicken. That's my number four as well. <laughs> I put, remember that one time when we found out that we could hit cuckoos endlessly with the Master Sword <laughs> in A Link to the Past? Remember what happens when you hit them over and over again? <laughs> the Cuckoo Revenge Squad is what it's called. <laughs> Yeah, when it, when it first happens to you, you panic and you're like, what the heck do I do? And you just die. That's what you do. Especially in the... the um, Dark world? In the dark world where there's the bone cuckoos. Yeah, those oh, are the cacotite. Yeah. Who remembers this? <laughs> I don't know that sound. You do? Yeah, it's from Ninja Gaiden. I love that sound. <laughs> when playing Ninja Gaiden, it's it's the most fashionable way to die, the best piece of music to die to. <laughs> Any death in Ninja Gaiden that involves an eagle in a pit is my fourth number way to die. <laughs> it's so funny watching back my Ninja Gaiden videos. I left every time, every single time an eagle knocked me into a pit, especially on level 6-2. 
Uh, that's excellent death music, and <laughs> it's just so funny to watch because you, you sit there and fall into a pit, and then you hear the music, and you're just like, fuck! And then when you watch it back, it's like hilarious because <laughs> you'll see, you see Ryu jump, get hit, and bounce back into the pit, and you'll just laugh because it's so funny. <laughs> it's not funny when you're playing, but it's funny to watch. <laughs> so that was my number four, Any Death on Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> my number three is from Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. So Simon Belmont is this hero who goes around freaking with a whip and slaying ghouls and skeletons left and right. But heaven forbid he fall into a little ravine of water <laughs> walking through town. Instant death. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> That's my number three. I hate. I used to hate that because like there's like. I guess maybe like two steps wide that you have to jump across and they're like right next to each other. And it's just so random. Why would you just have to jump over rivers in the middle of town? <laughs> why would there not be a bridge there? <laughs> and even if you did fall in, why could he just not swim to the other side? So that's my number three is falling into the water on Castlevania 2. Maybe that's why there's no children in town. <laughs> <laughs> they just all drown. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great point. Man, maybe we should build a bridge. I don't know. <laughs> or at least a fence. <laughs> my number three is short and sweet. Throwing a proximity mine in a urinal on GoldenEye and having your opponent come by and just get blown up by it. <laughs> And you're watching from the top of the vent, and while you're, uh, <laughs> while player two is looking for you, and they just run right into the toilet, and like, oh man, the urinal, and just get blown up and killed. So you're saying like a, a novice player who might like take a glance at the other person's screen, and you're like, oh, I know where you're He's at. in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, and, and there's an RCP-90 in here. <laughs> <laughs> there's also something else. A urinal cake. <laughs> Deadly urinal cake. Yeah, it is. Uh, Number three on my list is getting eggplant herpes. <laughs> getting to the dungeon level in Kid Icarus was very exciting. I thought it was just a full game of verticalness, but at the end of each level, verticalness. <laughs> you go into a Zelda-like dungeon and you have to find your way to the boss. That was so tight. And then I ran into the eggplant wizards. Once you get hit by an eggplant that they toss, you get cursed. You turn into a walking eggplant with legs. This is hilarious, but only if you are not playing the game, like my last one. This is the most awful status element to get in any game. <laughs> Even worse than frog or toad or mute, any of that shit. You just walk around and jump and hope you find the nurse that can heal you. You can't attack. You can't do anything except walk around and jump. You just want to die on purpose. And it's even more degrading if you have a full health bar. And you just getting hit by enemies just wanting to die, and it some, sometimes could take up to 30 seconds to die. So that was my number three, getting eggplant herpes. Speaking of games of verticalness, you recognize this sound? Contra? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> over and over. <laughs> That's my uh, number two is from Contra, level three. If you're playing simultaneously with another player, you're, you're, it's, a, it's a level of verticalness, as Brad described it. So basically, you're jumping up off from cliff to cliff to cliff, and as the, the screen below catches up, anytime you fall below that, you just it's automatic death. So if you're playing with two players, the person who's, going, who's up top, if he goes too fast, he can just make the person on the bottom just instantly die. And I always thought it was funny, because I used to play it with my friends, and they, they would just... Either myself or my friend would uh, force the other person to die by falling off cliffs endlessly, and you just hear that sound over and over. So that's my number two, is uh, killing your buddy on Contra. Especially if there's a spread shot up there, oh, and they're man. racing to get it, just <laughs> leave your partner behind. And then while you're laughing at them dying from not being fast enough, they're pushing start to steal one of your men. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let the inferior player catch up. Number two on my list. The world, 1-1. One, one. You see a stupid-looking Goomba inching towards you. You sit still, wanting to wait until the last possible second to jump so you can taunt the poor bastard by grabbing your balls as you crush its skull. <laughs> you press A to jump, but what is this? 
your little cousin just ate some chicken nuggets smothered in barbecue sauce and use your A button as a napkin. Oh, no. <laughs> your button is now stuck. Too bad. You don't jump in time and the Goomba walks all over Mario, <laughs> sending him straight to hell. <laughs> Number two on my list is kind of like number three on my list with the eggplant herpes. Running out of crash bombs in Mega Man 2 on the security oh, room level. Oh, hell no. Same with my last entry, but this time, you not only want to die, <laughs> you have to die. Because <laughs> there's nothing else that can destroy those fucking sentry guns. <laughs> You're sitting there, and they're just, especially if there's one left, like Nick said on the previous, forever. it takes forever, and you're just like, <laughs> come on. And this is funny, because I could, every time this happens to me, I could imagine Nick playing it. <laughs> He's like, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my number two. What's, wor what's worse is that even if you do die, you have to like go back in the level to fill up that, that charge yeah. uh, bomb, or whatever it's called as well. Yeah. It's just disgraceful. It is. <laughs> My number one is from Super Mario World. On the cheese bridge, Mario has to duck under one of the goals in order to get down to the secret passage in Soda Lake. Unfortunately, to do that, you have to slay Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've played the game before, you know that you go under that little goalpost where, where you would think the end of the level is. But there's like a, a drop-off underneath the goalpost. So if you go down there with Yoshi, you can... Uh, launch yourself off of it by i think pressing a and he'll jump under the goal post and there's a second goal post past that that you can uh hit to to open up a secret passage and i always thought it was hilarious because you're just ba bailing on yoshi instant death for yoshi so that's my number one story time oh nice during one late night on a cool fall evening on the eve of your 21st birthday 13 years ago you walk into a dimly lit arcade Lo and behold, your local game center received a new machine, the one that you saw on EGM a few months ago. Your <coughs> eyes open with amazing wonder as you notice no one is on that said machine. You wander past the familiar, unwanted, glitter distractions. You have no time for this bullshit. You throw a quarter in the player one slot and hit the start button. It's your first time playing Street Fighter Alpha 3. And your mouth is agape as you gaze at the myriad of characters at your disposal. You have less than a minute to make your selection as you toggle through some of the new characters. Rainbow Mika, or R Mika, the Russian pro wrestler catches your eye for two big obvious reasons. Sod <laughs> Sodom, the armored faced warrior, and Rolento, the baton wielding soldier, catch your eye. Where have you seen these guys before? Is that Cody and Guy from Final Fight? What's Cody doing in a prison garb? So many questions enter your mind as the clock ticks down. With seconds to spare, you pick the oh-so-familiar fireball-throwing, dragon-punch-raising Ken. Before you find out who your computer-controlled opponent is, a message bursts onto the screen. A new challenger has arrived. You look next to you and you see a tiny Chinese man. You can't tell how old he is, but he looks like he's no older than 12. Without a waiver in your faith, you again choose Ken. He chooses someone you have never seen before. Someone who kind of looks like Ryu, but wore a pink gi. You think to yourself, Haha, this looks like a gi Ryu. <laughs> you see that you have to choose an ism. A, X, or V. Hmm, X looks cool. It's red. Little do you know, Xism raises the character's offense, but drastically lowers their defense. Oh, and you don't notice your opponent picks A-ism. You can tell he's toying with you at first, taunting whenever you miss with a fireball or a hurricane kick. He eventually beats you with a series of fireballs, if you want to call them that. The real <laughs> names are Godokins. <laughs> Godokin. A fireball that appears from Dan's fingertips and disappears instantly. <laughs> it can't be classified as a projectile. So then the second round starts. And he beats you with a series of flying kicks and trips. You sit, you're sitting there dizzy. Can't do anything. All of a sudden, you see the screen go dark. The Chohatsu Dentitsu, the super taunt, is executed by performing two quarter forward motions and the taunt button. And a move of 
a series of dance taunts played one after another. He <laughs> rolls forward and performs a pose, flexing his bicep, and then rolls again to perform another such pose. Dan continues to roll around and alternate <laughs> between these two poses before jumping in the air and landing. Uh, when he lands, he displays his signature pose, sticking his ass out and giving a <laughs> thumbs up to the camera with a ping and his smile. <laughs> This super combo is like all others because it does no damage. <laughs> so finally you snap out of your dizzy spell just in time to hold back and block. But guess what? With that sliver of health you have left, he throws the weakest of weak Godokins, taking away that sliver of life and you fall to the ground and he taunts you into oblivion. <laughs> so that's number one. Death by Godokin while you're blocking. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty lame. <laughs> Uh, my number one is dying in your underwear. What game can you guys think of where you could die in your underwear? <laughs> Ghosts and goblins. Ghosts and goblins. There's nothing worse than losing your armor. Then while you're in your skeevies during a jump, you see a zombie come out of the ground. And you can't correct the arc of your jump because the game wasn't designed that way. So you take a zombie header to the balls and just die. <laughs> you turn into a skeleton. So that's my number one. Nice. Honorable mentions? I didn't have any. I have quite a few. Like Nick said, killing Yoshi in Super Mario World. I laughed too long and too hard at this when I was a child. <laughs> Yoshi's life was worthless. <laughs> If you're riding Yoshi and you jump over a pit and you want to get an extra group of coins, just throw his ass down the pit. No worries. <laughs> and he comes back to life anyways. You pop, you hit another box and it'll just come right out of it. Yeah. There was Chaos's Golden Shower Fatality oh, that was edited from Super Nintendo from Primal Rage. <laughs> uh, he actually pissed on you and that was his fatality. <laughs> it, it was acid piss. <laughs> Any death in Skater Die 2 during the half pipe. Remember that when if you would land wrong, your body would split in two and everything? That was yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> Getting blown up in Mortal Kombat 3 and having all five of your rib cages hit the ground. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Courtesy of Tim Wilson. Getting killed by Jason on Friday the 13th because it just says you are dead. It doesn't say game over. <laughs> and then caveman games pole vaulting into a t-rex's mouth maybe you have to pole vault over him mm -hmm. but you'll get stuck and go in his mouth so that was mine i'm sure we're missing a lot like we barely even touched mortal kombat you just barely mentioned it right now yeah. there's got to be some really funny fatalities babalities what have you there's one where johnny cage does a split and he just does like a. uh, uh like the speed bag punch of your balls, and then you blow up. It's in one of the newer ones. One of the newer yeah. ones. <laughs> nice. So, what I'm suggesting is that if you have uh, candidates for this list, please make sure to post that on Facebook. Yeah, we, we enjoy that. reading that stuff, and so does everyone else. And we might even mention you on the podcast, so uh, be creative. Yesterday, Naja asked me when we were in the car on the way home from... Safeway, she said, is drank a word? <laughs> I said, yeah, like I drank something. And she said, well, what if they use it like, I have drank in this cup. I said, no, that's fucking, I said, no, that's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> and she found that hilarious because I guess there's a song that Willie was listening to where it says that. Well, I have drank in this cup. What's drink? I guess like a slang term for alcohol oh. or something. So then uh, I asked them, what's it like? What other slang words do you guys use? And Willie said, booty tickled. <laughs> and I said, "That what's that? He said, you know when someone's butt hurt? Well, we say they're booty tickled. That's so, pretty funny. So later that night I was at home and I said, uh, Willie was all upset because he couldn't get anything sweet to eat. I was like, oh, don't be all booty licked. Like I messed oh, it lit. up on purpose, and like, <laughs> that's not even a word. You got like a man. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's not booty tickled, Dad. Like, <laughs> stop licking booty. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Like, if I hear a funny slang term that kids use these days, I'm going to bring it on here. And, of course, I'm going to mess it up on purpose at home and they have get them all upset. You know what the original one is? What? Ratchet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Thought. Oh, yeah. That hoe over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dad, you cannot say that. <laughs> 
Tot the thought. <laughs> okay, jerk of the week. Yep. I know Mike Button's looking forward to this one. <laughs> hashtag that shit. If you have a jerk, uh, there's a Mike Bunton created a hashtag for jerk of the week, didn't he? <laughs> so hashtag jerk of the week or hashtag not jerk of the week. <laughs> I guess I could do mine first. It's kind of mild. Stuck up, superficial referee coaches from soccer games. Indoor soccer games. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> This is a co-jerk of the week of me and Brandon's. We, we like to go watch Nick play soccer from time to time, indoor soccer, and he's a goalie. And so uh, at the beginning of the game, I walked around and uh, I told Nick, I was like, hey, you see that bald-headed fuck over there on the other team? I want you to fucking stomp on his neck. Just playing around. And then so I walked back. And then so me and Brandon go sit in the stands and whatever side Nick's on, we go sit by him. Uh, just to like cheer him on and sometimes I like to start a chant but Brandon never wants to start a chant <laughs> uh, and then so it was during halftime and the team switched yeah so you guys get what 20 minutes per half it's 21 yeah 21, 21? okay that's then that's my fault but this guy's still such a dickhead so I look at the clock thinking you have 20 minutes to play and it's 21 like 30 so I'm like, oh, yeah, we could go. We have some time before the game starts. Oh, okay. So we go over there, and we're talking to Nick. I don't remember what we say. Uh, and then, like, we're starting to walk back, and the fucking dickhead referee says, <laughs> Gentlemen, away from the net, please. I'm like, what the fuck? We're walking away. There's still a minute and a half before the game starts, but... And we're grown-ass men. Yeah, we're grown men. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, let's see you wear a referee uniform outside of the bar where you try to pick up 50-year-old man, asshole. <laughs> You're saying he's gay? I don't care. He probably sucks dick. He, he probably does it for money. I know that, that ref stuff pays pretty well, but he's got this lavish lifestyle that he needs extra money for. <laughs> Dickhead. He was bald, too. like, And he had like on these knee braces, it looked like, and he was like, I'm fucking hot shit. I'm the best. I'm the best referee in the league. He is though. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. I mean, I've, I've been playing indoor soccer for shoot, like almost ten years now, and I've seen a lot of bad refs. He's actually the best, the best ref in that league. We probably because he takes his job so seriously. Like I told Brad, Brad, he probably goes at home and sleeps in his uniform, <laughs> wakes up, jacks off on it, washes it. <laughs> and then dries it, irons it, and then he just couldn't help with them and jacks off again. He's like, oh, man, now I'm going to be late. But guess what? He has 50 other uniforms he likes to, to wear, too. So he's like, ooh, do I want to wear the pinstripe Yankee uniform or do I want to wear the polo plaid uniform? <laughs> oh, let me wear some cleats. These look cool. I bet he does that, wears cleats just to look cool. <laughs> <laughs> like I bet you he wears, wears a watch too just like oh I see people don't wear watches these days that's cool you wear a watch fuck you <laughs> seems like you're making a lot of assumptions about a guy just because he didn't want you to be behind the goal I am right. <laughs> that's what dickheads get they get assumptions <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with that fucking asshole retard. <laughs> I say next time we go we don't move I'll be like, what? <laughs> we could do it on the other side, Nick. We won't do it on this side. So we don't embarrass you. Or do, what would he do if I was on one side of the <laughs> and you were on the other? Like, he wouldn't know who to start with. Like, oh, let me bring out my uh, indoor soccer league protocol handbook and see which of the attackers do I uh, get away from, chew away from, go first. <laughs> Tim would be like, what's going on? <laughs> we probably wouldn't be allowed back in. We'd have to wear a disguise. <laughs> Groucho Marx glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm done with the ref, too. I, I just had that little bit in the beginning. Uh, I thought you had a jerk of the week, too. I just want to make it generic that I don't think people should be so offended by jokes. That's all. Fucking jerks of the week. Comedy is not a place for political correctness. I don't want to get into it too much because I don't want to say the wrong thing and end up like Artie Lang where I have to prove to everyone that I'm actually a good guy. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Google search Artie Lang and Carrie Champion 
from uh, ESPN show First Take. You'll see uh, some stuff that I consider to be very funny, and others people consider to be offensive. I guess. Oh man, that I I read those <laughs> Twitter posts, and the one that got me is when he said, yeah. "I want Carrie Champion to laugh at my white dick." <laughs> <laughs> That sold me. I had to read the rest of them. <laughs> Ernie Lang is hilarious. He was hilarious on the Howard Stern show. It's a pity that we have adults watching us, the FCC, on what we can and can't listen to. It's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I parent my kids to not look at that stuff and teach them that they have to reach a certain age before they could watch movies or whatever, certain movies. And that should be good enough. I think us as adults don't need our TV monitored by the FCC or our radio or whatever. It's just bullshit. Yeah, like Nigel will ask me, why can't I watch Jackass? It's not inappropriate. And I say, do you want to see a male penis? Because you will if you watch Jackass. And then she's like, eh. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so next time you want to, like she started watching this movie called You're Next. It's a horror movie on Netflix. Yeah. And the first two minutes is this huge sex scene, and she turned it off. She was like, I didn't know it had sex in it. I was like, just ask me, and I'll tell you about movies. Because I don't mind she, watch, she watches horror movies, but like the the sex stuff, I know she doesn't like, and she won't, like, won't be attracted to it. So I'll tell her, hey, you can't watch this one, you can't watch that one. Stop getting so booty tickled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically my point. And like like Brad said about the FCC, that that that's I guess the FCC is my jerk of the week because I understand that businesses and you know television station television networks or radio networks or whatever they're they're gonna put on the air what they believe will make them the most money, and if they feel that offensive humor is not gonna make them money, then they're not gonna let them out on the air. That's fine, I understand that, but what I don't like is when the government gets involved and says no, you can't put that on the air. That's when I have a problem with it, and that's why I say hashtag fuck censorship. Okay, box art trivia, Super Nintendo version. How many? Let me see. Nine. All right. Number one. Oh, that's a cute kitty. <laughs> that's it? That's it. <laughs> a knight is being attacked by a troll. A war between monster and man takes control of this cover. There's a fire demon and a giant blue skeleton monster. What is that? I don't know what that is. A cyborg with spikes on its head and shoulders? He's standing very prominently. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I know that one. This looks like a 50s B-movie with swirly effects. Like tie-dye and blue humans. Ooh, these guys look like the Beatles. One of them is holding an umbrella. Ah, that's Mega Man. <laughs> 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 he, he looks advanced, like he received an upgrade. He's riding around on a jet ski or something. <laughs> A sumo is fighting a pirate in a tiled room. The pirate seems to have slipped on a bar of soap. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's those idiots from TV. Well, I should I shouldn't call them idiots. I think they're retarded. I mean, mentally handicapped. <laughs> Don't say I said retarded. My nephew is retarded. I mean, he. he <laughs> I mean, he's he's Down syndrome. So, so she's saying that the people on the cover are mentally handicapped. Uh, it's those idiots from TV. Well, I should call. I shouldn't call them idiots. I think they were retarded. I mean, mentally handicapped. Don't say retard. I said retarded. My nephew is retarded. I mean, he's Down syndromed. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know either. Okay, number one. That's a cute kitty. Bubsy. I was thinking of that. I just couldn't remember the name of it. Final Fantasy 3. Mm. Oh. 
bitch. Moogle. Yep. Do you tell her it's a Moogle? Fuck no. I, I don't. All I do is get her stuff and then go back. That's all I do now. Uh, number two. A knight is being attacked by a troll. The Lost Vikings. I have a guess on that one. Super ghouls and ghosts. Okay. A war between monster and man takes control of this cover. There's a fire demon and a giant blue skeleton monster. The ogre battle? Nope. I don't have a guess. Contra 3, the alien wars. What is that? I don't know what that is. A cyborg with spikes on its head and shoulders? <laughs> he has a very prominent stance. <laughs> this is Earthbound. Earthbound. This looks like a 50s B-movie with swirly effects like tie-dye and there's blue, hu blue humans on it. I don't know. Zombies ate my neighbors. Oh, okay. Ooh, these guys look like the Beatles. One is holding an umbrella. Super Lings. Ah! They look like the Beatles. Look at their shaggy haircuts. <laughs> I know, but I get that, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you know why I come to her. <laughs> ah, that's Mega Man. He looks advanced. <laughs> like he received an upgrade. He's riding around on a jet ski. <laughs> Is that Mega Man X2? It is X2. Asuma is fighting a pirate in a tiled room. The pirate seemed to have slipped on a bar of soap. <laughs> the pirate. <laughs> Street Fighter 2. Championship Edition. Uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Turbo. Oh, Turbo. Championship Edition with Bison. Uh, it's those idiots from TV. Well, I shouldn't call them idiots. I think they're retarded. I mean, <laughs> mentally handicapped. Don't say I said retarded. My nephew is retarded. I mean, he has Down syndrome. Three ninjas? <laughs> I put down three stooges, but I don't even think there is an SNES three stooges game. Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do on episode 75 is I'm going to record my kids' impressions and spice it into the podcast for Box Art Trivia. There's going to be, uh, each kid will get four NES and one Super Nintendo. Cool. I take offense to your friend implying that Beavis and Butthead are mentally handicapped. Yeah. <laughs> They're well, just troubled kids. They don't have any freaking parents. You, They're living in, in a house all by themselves while they're attending high school. All right, so I have one final story that I was going to tell about on 69. I tried to do episode 69 and not have any sexual references, <laughs> so I decided to save it. It was kind of Halloween themed because this is the time I thought I was going to transform into a werewolf. <laughs> and it's not like a whole, like a full transformation, I just felt like such a beast. <laughs> so the, the evening started off with me and Karen going out to Black Angus. And getting the campfire dinner for two, it's fucking awesome. Yes. You get the fucking wheelhouse sampler. Well, you can get any appetizer, but no one picks, like, fucking shrimp cocktail. They get the wagon wheel sampler, <laughs> which comes with fried zucchini, buffalo chicken, and uh, cocktail shrimp. And you also get dipping sauces with it. And it comes on a wagon wheel. No, it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> and then you also get soup. You get two sides. I usually get baked potato soup when they put in real bacon and sour cream. And then you get a steak. You get New York ribeye, fillet, prime rib, whatever you want. And also uh, a side with that as well. So we we got our dinner. And also you get a dessert as well. So we usually save the dessert for after sexy time. We take it home. And so... I was sitting there, we, we, we got finished doing our sexy time, and I just felt like a beast. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was because the kids were gone. So I got done, and I, I was just, there was like so much fluid, she had to go take a shower. <laughs> and so I was marching around the house, just like marching around, like didn't know what to do. I just felt like so fucking pumped. My dick was still hard too. And so I remembered that I had some steak left from Black Angus. So I went in the refrigerator and I just flew the refrigerator door open. I didn't even give a fuck about having it stop. I didn't care if the door broke off. And I took my meat out and I it was still a little warm. So the I didn't steak, have to right? The steak, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I it was still warm from the, the night, so I didn't have to heat it in the microwave. So I was marching around naked like, what can I do to this fucking steak? So I picked it up and I slammed it on my counter. 
and I climbed up on the counter and I squatted down and held my steak like this and I started eating the steak with my hands and my mouth, no fork or anything. And I just like, I was like, Argh! like just eating it. Like I felt like a beast. <laughs> After that, I threw my meat down with the steak down and I yelled. I sounded like the, the uh, nemesis from Resident Evil 3. I yelled so loud. Karen was like, what was that? <laughs> So I, at that moment, I, I don't didn't pay attention to what the moon was, but I felt like it was just a, a weird shift that went on. It was tight. So that was my little werewolf story that Brandon hinted at. All right, so I think that'll do it for episode 71 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.